morning. Today is Tuesday, April 28th. Let's get right to some breaking news. On Tuesday, May 5th, we will be completing our next exam on Unit 8, which is going to cover gas laws and stoichiometry. Now, in order to prepare for the exam, I want to make you aware of a few things. The first thing is that you will have 90 minutes to complete the exam. It won't take 90 minutes to complete the exam, but because it's going to be a timed exam, I wanted to give you more than enough time. Now, there are going to be different versions of the exam, so everyone's exam is going to be slightly different. I want to make you aware of some commonalities. There will be six questions regardless of your exam, and you will be allowed to use your notes, open notebook, open notes, resources galore, whatever you need. However, there are a few stipulations. Number one, you will not be able to return to a previous question. So you will have just one shot at the question. You'll write down your answer. Once you move on to the next question, you won't be able to go back and look at the previous one. The second thing, your work is going to be submitted in a separate Dropbox and must be submitted within 15 minutes of your completion of the exam. The exam is gonna cover six questions. The first question is going to be a Boyle's, Charles, or Gay-Lussac type problem. The second question is going to be a combined gas law problem. Those are the two easier ones. The third and fourth questions will be a Dalton's law problem and a Graham's law problem. I remind you that we've gone over examples on all of this and completed homeworks, so please go back and review those in preparation for the exam. Finally, we'll have a fifth question on the ideal gas law where you'll incorporate density into it just like we practice and a sixth question on ideal gas law where you're going to incorporate stoichiometry which is what we're going to learn later today. If you have any questions I'll be available for zoom sessions on Thursday at 10 and 12 p.m. where we're going to actually go over a review assignment. Any other questions you can direct to me through either email or through Schoology Messenger. Thank you. Okay, with our first story today, we're going to go over a gas law problem that involves stoichiometry. I'm going to turn it over to our resident expert, Kevin Orlando, who is going to go over a very challenging stoichiometry problem. Keep in mind, most of your problems are not going to be as difficult as the one that we're about to look at, but I wanted you to get a sense of what the hardest problem that I could possibly come up with would look like, and then you can work from there. If you could do this problem, you could do any. Take it away, Kevin. Thanks, Kevin. Okay, we're gonna take a look at a really difficult problem. Um, this is probably what I would have given had we been in class together. This is about as difficult a problem as I could come up with. So if you could do this problem, you can certainly do any of the problems that are on the homework assignment tonight or any of the problems that you'll see on the exam on Tuesday, May 5th, don't forget. Okay, so let's take a look at the problem. I'm gonna put the problem right here and go. So it says 3.4 liters of methane with a vapor density of 2.3 grams per liter at 23 degrees Celsius. So just dissecting that first part here, you have 3.4 liters, here's methane, if you forgot what the formula for methane was. It has a temperature of 23 degrees Celsius, but we automatically convert that to Kelvin and a vapor density of, vapor density is just a fancy way of saying the density of a gas, so a vapor density of 2.3 grams per liter. So that's all information about methane. If you go on to read, it's reacted with oxygen. Five liters of oxygen at a temperature of 39, which is 312, at a pressure of 3.0 atm. Now, Think about this, it says the reaction is then ignited, a combustion reaction takes place, which means we're gonna produce carbon dioxide and water, and the temperature, it says, stabilizes at 540 degrees Celsius, so we convert that to Kelvin, in a 10.5 liter vessel. And they're asking us, what is the total pressure? So I want you to think about this for a second. At 540 degrees Celsius, obviously water is a gas, carbon dioxide's already a gas even at room temperature, so we know that's still a gas. So we're gonna have carbon dioxide in here, we're gonna have water vapor in here. Is that it? So in any other problem, we'd be like, oh, perfect. However, remember that we also started with two gases, and since we know exactly how much of each of the two gases we started with, we're gonna be able to figure out which one is left over. 
So there's actually going to be a third gas in here. We don't know what that gas is yet, but after some calculations, we'll be able to figure it out. So this is not only a stoichiometry problem, it's not only a gas law problem, but it's also a limiting reagent problem where we're gonna to have to worry about the excess reagent. So there's a lot going on in this problem. All right, let's take a look at the first part here. In order for us to figure out how much of our products we make, we need to know how much of our reactants we're starting with. And we need to do that in moles because right now we can't do much with it in this form. So let's take a look at, uh, we'll start off with CH4. So we're told that we have a volume of 3.4 liters of CH4. And we're also told that the density of that is 2.3 grams per liter. So 2.3 grams of CH4 for every one liter, whatever size the container is in. In this case, it's 3.4. So when I multiply that, liters times grams per liter is going to give me grams. So if I add one more step, 16.05 grams of CH4, molar mass off the periodic table, for every one mole of CH4. If I multiply that out, I'll get my starting moles of CH4. So 3.4 times 2.3 divided by 16.05, and I get 0.487. I can go with two significant figures, so let's go with 0.49 moles of CH4, and that's at the start. Okay, the next part, we're going to figure out how many moles of O2 we have at the start. So to do that, we're going to take PV equals NRT. Now some of you are saying, wait, you didn't use PV equals NRT over here, why are you using it over here? Well, what you do, what steps you take depend on what tools you're given. So in this case, we had to use density and volume in order to find mass and eventually moles. By the way, we didn't use this temperature at all. It's insignificant. Over here, we're given all of the information that we can use PV equals NRT for. So we're going to use that in this case. And we're going to solve for N, which means R and T are going to come under here. So N is going to equal PV divided by RT. In this case, my pressure is 3.0 atm, my volume is 5.0 liters, and my value for R is 0 0.0821 liter atm over mole Kelvin, and in this case, my temperature is 312 Kelvin. So my moles of oxygen it's going to be 15 divided by 0 0.0821 divided by 312, which is 0 0.58, 0 0.59. Let's go with moles of O2. And again, that's at the start. So now we know our starting moles of methane. We know our starting moles of oxygen. In order to actually use these, we're going to have to balance our equation. So I'm going to do that next. So I have one carbon, one carbon, four hydrogens. So I'm going to put a two here. That's two plus two, put a two here. And these will end up being one. So now, just like we did way back in the chemical reactions unit, we're going to take each of our starting materials and we're going to take them to the same product so that we can compare them. So I'm going to do that down here. So I'm going to start off with my 0 0.49 moles of CH4, and I'm going to have another line where I start with my 0 0.59 moles of O2. I am going to take them both to the same product, and I'm just going to pick carbon dioxide. Eventually, we'll have to figure out both of them because we're going to need both carbon dioxide and water. So for methane, I have one mole of methane on the bottom. I'm writing it in green based on the coefficients. And I'm going to go to carbon dioxide. So I also have one mole carbon dioxide. Down here, I have two moles of oxygen for every one mole 
of CO2. So this is pretty easy. So we're going to get for the first one 0.49. So that's 0.49 moles CO2. And for this one, we're going to get point. Now it should be 0.295 because when you divide this in half, if we have two significant figures here, I'm just going to round it. It's going to end up being 0.30 moles of CO2. So that's important. That means the maximum amount of moles of CO2 that we can make is this number, 0.30 moles. This number never happens. So remember what we do with those. We just cross them out so that way we don't accidentally use this anywhere. So if I go back here, that means that oxygen is going to be our limiting reagent. That means it is the one that runs out first. So if oxygen is our limiting reagent, methane is our excess reagent. So that means we can go back into our container and we could write in our last substance, which is going to be methane. Okay, based on that, so now that we know our limiting reagent, we can take it to our other product, water, because now we know the amount of CO2, so I'm going to check that off. So let's figure out the amount of water. So I'm going to take 0 0.59 moles O2. I'm going to multiply it by my mole fraction or mole ratio. So two moles of O2. This time I'm going to multiply it by two moles of water based on the balanced equation. So I will get an answer of 0.59. That is my second product. So now I know how much of each of the products I have. So the only thing that I have to figure out is how much methane I have left over. So to figure out the amount of methane left over, I can start with my oxygen one more time. So I have 0.59 moles O2. This time I'm going to multiply it by 2 moles of O2, but only 1 mole of CH4. That's the mole ratio. So 0.59 divided by 2, that's going to equal 0 0.30 moles of CH4. Now, that's not this amount. What is it? Hopefully you're thinking, this is the amount of CH4 used. So to get the amount of CH4 that we had excess, we're going to take Sorry, this is our excess reagent, not our excess amount yet. We're going to take this 0.49 moles of CH4 at the start. Hopefully everyone can read this. Minus my 0 0.30 moles of CH4 used. So 49 minus 30, it's going to be 0.19 moles of CH4 excess. So now I have the amount for each of those things that I have in the container. Some of you might be asking, well, back when we did stoichiometry, we went all the way to grams. How come we didn't go to grams here? Well, we didn't need grams because we're using PV equals NRT and moles. So we only had to go from moles of starting amount to moles of product or in this case, excess moles of reactant. All right, so now we're ready to solve the major part of the question, which is to find out the total pressure. So we're gonna get PV equals NRT. P is gonna equal NRT over V. So now I have at 540 degrees Celsius, we have three things in there. We have water, we have CH4, and we have CO2. The number of moles that we have for water is 0.59. The 
The moles that we have for CH4 is 0.19. And the moles that we have for carbon dioxide is 0.3. Because all of these are in the same container, they have the same temperature and the same volume, we can add them all up. Now you could do this because it's moles. You couldn't add them all up if it were grams. I saw some of you tried to do that. You wound up with a mass on problem number one of the previous homework of like around 50 grams. If you got a mass of 50 grams, that's because you, you did not figure out grams of each individual thing separately and then add them. You did it based on moles, which you can do. But in this case, we can because we're not worrying about grams at all. We're not dealing with grams in this equation. So we have 0.59 plus 0.19 plus 0.3. That turns out to be a total of 1.08 moles. And I can keep my decimal place because this is addition and subtraction. So it's based on the fewest number of decimal places. So I'm going to plug in the 1.08 moles into this equation. So pressure total, which is what I'm looking for, is going to equal 1.08 moles times R, 0.0821 liter ATM over mole Kelvin, times my temperature, which at this point is 813K, divided by my volume, which is 10.5 liters. So 1.08 times 0.0821 times 813 divided by 10.5 turns out to be about 6.87 ATM. That is the answer to the first part of the question. So at 540 degrees Celsius, this would be the total pressure, 6.87 ATM. So the next part of the question says, the reaction vessel then cools to 25. Okay, so at 25 degrees Celsius, what is the total pressure? So we're still gonna use this equation, P equals NRT over V, but think for a second, there's a catch here, there's a trick. At 25 degrees Celsius, we still have carbon dioxide and we still have methane. Both of those are gases, even at room temperature, but water is no longer a gas. So when we plug in for N over here, we're not gonna use all three of these. We're just gonna use the methane and the carbon dioxide added together. Again, when the temperature drops, water goes through a phase change. It stops being a gas and starts being a liquid. So, now the total number of moles is only 0.49 times 0.0821 times our temperature, which is 298K. The volume of the container doesn't change, so that stays as 10.5 liters. So obviously our pressure is gonna go down because it's at a lower temperature and it has fewer moles of gas that are now present in the container. That turns out to be a total pressure of 1.1 ATM. This time we're limited to two significant figures because of the 0.49. Over here, we were allowed three, so that's why we had three here. So that answers the second part of the question. And then the final part of the question says, Calculate the volume of water in milliliters remaining in the vessel at this temperature. So because water has condensed, it's no longer floating around as a gas, it's sitting as water as a liquid down here at the bottom. By the way, we'll find out that the volume of it is so small that those of you that are questioning, should we have changed this 10.5 liters, the volume of water is so small that it doesn't really affect this answer. So. Looking at my moles of water, I have 0 0.59 moles. We know that one mole of water 
has a mass of 18.02 grams of water. And then finally, hopefully we remember one gram of water is equal to one milliliter of water because the density of water is one. So 1.0 grams of water, 1.0 milliliters of water. So we're going to get a volume of water that is equal to 0.59 times 18.02 or about 10.6 milliliters. So obviously 10.6 milliliters is a really small amount compared to 10.5 or 10.6 liters. So negligible, you can ignore that based on significant figures in this part of the calculation. Alrighty, so that problem was difficult. It was challenging, um, but it had all of the different aspects that we've talked about. So you needed to use density, you needed to use the ideal gas law, you needed to use balancing equations. You needed to use stoichiometry over here to figure out how much you started with and how much you ended up with. You needed to use Dalton's law of partial pressures to combine the moles of all of these different things in order to figure out the total number of moles. You needed to remember things like boiling point and to recognize the fact that when you went from 540 degrees Celsius down to 25 degrees Celsius, one of your three gases would condense and it wouldn't be a gas anymore. This was a difficult problem. You're not gonna see anything quite this hard on your exam, but you could certainly see aspects of this. So you can see you know, problems where they give you information where you can use PV equals NRT, or problems where they give you information and you can use density. In fact, some of you are gonna to have to do this, and others are gonna have a version where you have to use this. So just be aware that those two methods are out there. Okay, I'm gonna pass it back over to Kevin who's gonna wrap it up for this lesson, so. Thanks, Kevin. And that does it for our show for today. So remember, try the homework tonight. I'm gonna to post the review probably on Wednesday and then all day on Thursday, I'm gonna be available to answer questions through email on Schoology, but I'm gonna have a several video sessions set up so that you can ask any questions that you might have hopefully in a live feedback that I'll get to interact with all, all of you, all 100 of you. We'll see if that actually happens. All right. Thanks again. Hope you're enjoying the shows. I'll see you soon. Bye.